Welcome to Faith and Friends. We're happy to spend the next 30 minutes with you, and we're in for a busy show. We're going to just jump right in and get started. Yes, like you jump in the pool to do a cannonball. That's right, because when you get washed with the Bible, with the scriptures, it changes you. Start with Hebrews 3, 4 through 15. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end, be faithful. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be any in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said, today, if you hear, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in the rebellion. How do we expect to hear the voice of God if we're running in the other direction or if we have a hardened heart towards him and the things that matter to him? It's so important to keep a soft, fertile heart so that we are attuned to what God may have for us on an hourly basis, a daily basis, and for a lifetime. Thank you, Andy. Now, in today's show, you're going to hear about a revival that's coming to Paulding County coming up this July. While in nearby Van Wert County, one of the FCA scholarship recipients is sharing how service makes her life complete. Here's Lincoln View's Mackenzie Davis. I'm Mackenzie Davis from Lincoln View High School. I was raised in a church, but I never had a real faith of my own. Once I began high school, I began attending FCA, which really gave me a boost to pursue my faith. At this time, I started looking for a church to call home. I, be I came across Lifehouse, which is an unconventional church, but offered exactly what I needed to grow in my faith. I have been attending Lifehouse for about three years now, and I have loved every second. I have also recently began attending youth group at Lifehouse, and I now I do believe that my faith has become much stronger and is growing more now more than ever. I play golf and softball and also participate in FC, FFA, Beta Club, 4-H, Buckeye Ambassadors, Van Wert County Junior Fair Board, National Honor Society, as well as FCA, and encourage my peers to do so as well. By participating in these events, I am able to serve the community, serve my school, and serve my peers. Serving others is a large part of who I am, and it makes me feel complete. FCA has definitely impacted my faith because of FCA I have found my forever church. I have grown to put my trusting to God and all of His greatness. Today's OIO in the Community segment takes us to Paulding County where, Lord willing, come July, amazing things for God are going to happen. In fact, amazing things for God are already happening because the planning phase is underway for Paulding County's beautiful feet celebration. Is this the time? And joining me now on Faith and Friends is Chet Swearingen, the president of Beautiful Feet, the founder of Beautiful Feet. Um, before we talk about what's gonna come in Paulding County. Why don't you tell us what is this Beautiful Feet Ministries? Beautiful Feet comes from Romans chapter 10, 15, where it says, be how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And so it's a, an evangelistic ministry that works together with local communities, countywide to unite churches, to conduct both prayer and as well as evangelistic events. So that, that's in, in, in a nutshell, that's in a what nutshell. it is. Well, that little nutshell is coming into our area because Paulding County, July, Beautiful Feet is coming. And it's not just you that are coming, you are bringing a message that uh, we certainly hope is gonna revitalize and uh, impact the entire region for Christ in an incredible way. What is coming in July? In July, it'll be uh, July 16th through the 19th, a Sunday through Wednesday, every single night, uh, beginning at 7 p.m. We'll be having uh, services at the Wayne Trace High School. It's right on Route 127, uh, just to the south of Paulding. And uh, we'll, we'll be having like a, a mass choir that'll be uh, performing on Sunday night, uh, the 16th. 
It'll be made up of uh, individuals from across the county from all different denominations. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a great event. We're having a guest speaker that night. Uh, he'll be a, a youth pastor because there's going to be a big youth event uh, prior mm -hmm. to that evening service. Um, beginning at 5.30, so if there's any youth in the area that would like to participate, they can come at 5.30 and uh, have, have a pizza. It's going to be a pizza blast, so there's going to be a time for the youth to uh, socialize and to connect with one another, and uh, that after that we're going to be uh, going into the regular service. We have a, a great, beautiful feet worship team, a very, very dynamic worship team for, for, uh, playing music and praise and worship. And then also this, this youth pastor that we're bringing in, uh, he's going to be speaking, uh, sharing for maybe 20, 30 minutes, and then I'll, then I'll pr uh, present the, the final uh, sermon for the night and prov providing an opportunity or an invitation mm -hmm. to people to come forward and accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. 70% of the Paulding County churches are already participating, getting ready for this, is yes. that correct? And yeah. you have some surrounding counties who are also involved. Yes, about four other counties surrounding Paulding, they're, they're also participating in this. So there are a lot of events, a lot of activities, in fact, a lot of things that are vying for people's time these days. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you would agree with me that um, choosing God is the most important activity mm -hmm. that we can do, but you know, there's a lot of churches and their activities happening. Why this event? Why should people put this on their calendars and make sure that they attend? We believe that uh, God works through unity. When, it, when he sees the unity of the church, like he says in Psalms 133, he commands his blessing upon it. And so what we have seen, we have done 12 countywide prayer gatherings since we've come back from our service overseas in another uh, restricted you access country. You were missionaries country. overseas. Yes, we yeah. were missionaries. And so when we came back, we just started working with different counties in the tri-state area, uniting churches across denominational lines to conduct countywide revival prayer gatherings. And so this just kind of developed. And, and we see when this unity happens, God begins to work. And so we see that now in Paulding County as well. There's, we've already conducted two countywide revival prayer gatherings in Paulding County, where over 1% of the, the population, about 1.5% 1 1 of the population of Paulding County was present at the Paulding High School, where we conducted the uh, countywide revival prayer gathering. It's a very, very dynamic time of unity. So if God can gather 1% and do amazing things, yes. imagine what can happen yes. as that grows and grows. Now, every event that is uh, God-driven can come with struggles and strife, mm -hmm. whereas uh, prayer and fasting are an important precursor step. And that is taking place this week, a prayer and fasting event. Yes, from the 18th through the 20th, we will be conducting a, a prayer, a time of prayer and fasting. The Paulding County churches will be conducting it. And we have also con contacted uh, missionary uh, friends and national believers around the world. We have 15 different locations around the world. These are large ministries, huge ministries with hundreds of churches and thousands of believers are gonna be praying specifically for Paulding County mm -hmm. uh, from the 18th through the 20th. And uh, this is, uh, they're, they're also going to be fasting right alongside of us here in Paulding County. So are you a pastor? Are you a church member? Or maybe you are just an individual listening to this saying, I absolutely agree, unity is so important. Is this the time? That is the title of the Beautiful Feet celebration taking place July 16th through the 19th at Wayne Trace High School, 4915 US 127 Haviland. Seven o'clock is the uh, nightly service times. There's the website where you can find out more informa information about this ministry itself, Romans1015.com. And hey, maybe you wanna get involved. Maybe you've got some questions about this. I encourage you to call Chet at the phone number that you just saw on the screen. We'll put that back up for you again so you can see that. That phone number is 260-920-8248. And is there still time for people to get involved to be pre preparation and preparing for this event too? Absolutely. There's many different opportunities for people to serve at this event. And if they would contact us, we can let them know what those opportunities are. Relationships. It's difficult to truly change one's heart for Christ without investing in them. Pastor Doug Boquist likes to call forming relationships the ministry of hanging around. Today he shares the meaning behind that ministry. Here's Andy and Pastor Doug. Joined once again by Pastor Doug Boquist from Lima Community Church. Been here in the Lima area four years now? Four years. Four yeah. years. And one of the things that's impressed me, I've seen you seen your church, but I've seen you games, I've seen you on the fields, I've seen you in the community, I've seen you in the hallways at Lima Senior. You're around, and you're around people, and you're getting to know people. 
Well, one of the things you, you said once was, if I'm in church more than 50% of my time, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be out. And that, that's really a big philosophy in the way you do ministry. Yeah, yeah. In fact, when the board hired us, they said to me, Pastor, if you're in the office half the time, something's mm -hmm. wrong. You know, we, we want you to help us get into the community. Um, a number of people call this a number of different things. <laughs> uh, somebody much smarter than I wrote a book called The Ministry of Presence. I, I call it the ministry of hanging around. <laughs> you just hang around people, yeah. you know, and uh, you become their friends. Uh, and they're, they're not projects. They're not uh, targets. You, you just love them and you serve them. And in time, um, you may get the opportunity because of the relationship that's been built. They share things that are, are close to their heart and you share things that are close to yours. Years ago, uh, you know, I was schooled in, in various evangelism, evangelism uh, tactics. One of them was the four spiritual laws in which you would go up to a stranger and, and ask, you know, what their destiny would be in eternity should they die tonight. Um, and People are in heaven tonight because of that. Uh, and some people still use that effectively. Uh, but more and more, uh, I think our society is populated with, with folks that feel like to have in-depth spiritual conversations, you have to earn the right. Mm -hmm. they, they really want to see who you are. They want to know your heart. One of the things I think about is, uh, we have two eyes and one mouth. We have two ears and one mouth. We have two hands and one mouth. We've got two feet and one mouth. We've got two nostrils and one mouth. But for too long, all of the, all of the emphasis on uh, sharing our faith has been with our mouths. Um, but as the saying says, when it's all said and done, there's often more said. People need a living demonstration of the love of Christ the unconditional regard and acceptance and grace that he gives. A good friend of mine says, uh, love people, wait for pain. <laughs> you know, if you love people, uh, you listen to them, you earn the right. In time, they will share with you and you might be able to, to bring the Prince of Peace to bear to where their, their soul is, is troubled. So, um, you know, one of our philosophies of ministry is to be in the world, but not of the world, yeah. as Jesus prayed mm -hmm. in, in uh, John 17. In the 1920s, there was uh, kind of a breakup of, of evangelicals. Uh, one group uh, went the way of, of uh, social justice, feeding the poor, clothing the naked, um, you know, working in, in, in compassionate ministries. The other group went highly um, evangelistic in terms of services and in, in, in terms of just communication mm -hmm. uh, of the gospel and not the demonstration. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because I think it's both. Right. Um, I think, I don't think anybody would argue that the church we love is not the influence in our culture that it once was. Mm. And I'm sure there's many factors for that, but one of which I, I'm, I'm convinced is this. We stopped serving. Mm. We stopped loving. Yeah. You know, um, I, I've been invited into the hallways, in the classrooms, in the ball fields uh, as a pastor, which some people are very surprised. But I go to serve. Uh, you do too. <laughs> I love what you do, Andy. I, I absolutely love what you do. I'm so proud of you. Um, but but when, when Christians just love people without an agenda, you know, without being the moral policeman, you know, when we do this, doors close. When we do this, how can we serve? Doors open. At the end of the day, people want to be loved. And uh, when they see in a, in a follower of Christ, somebody who loves without counting cost, somebody who serves without the thought of what am I getting back, mm -hmm. they do more than hear the presentation of the gospel.
They see it. Um, there are an awful lot of believers who really don't have unbelieving friends mm. because it's safe, you know, and, and in fact, the statistics are rather dire uh, in the 90 percent of, of people who have been a believer for more than two years. We obviously still know uh, people who don't share their faith. But in terms of the, the intimacy and the fellowship, that's all reserved for the Christian friends. Yeah. And um, I, I don't think that's the way Jesus did it, mm. you know. Um, Matthew records the, the story. Jesus went from town to town, village to village, uh, teaching, healing. And it says he was moved with compassion. Mm because they seem to be like sheep without a shepherd. And the word there, moved with compassion, really, uh, uh, the compassion word there has to do with, with the bowels. Uh, uh, it, it means his stomach gripped. Wow. It, it, he had a clench in it. I mean, it was a, it was a physical response. It, 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 it hurt him to see their pain. Yeah. Uh, and so he did very practical things, mm -hmm. you know. In, in fact, he tells us, uh, we can do a number of things that don't require theological training or, <laughs> or words at all. If I was hungry, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you visited me. Um, I was a stranger and you invited me in. Well, anybody can do that, whether you're a CEO with a PhD or whether you're, you know, illiterate in, in a third world. We can all do those things. And those are all practical ways in which we love. I call it the ministry of hanging around. Just love mm. people yeah. and see what the Lord does. Yeah. But we want to judge people. Mm, that's his job. We love them. Right. Well, hopefully that gives you some insight as you think about just people right around you right now. Family members, neighbors, people at work, children that you know that could use some encouragement. That you could hang around. That you could be therefore now and therefore in the future as well. Give it some thought, give it some prayer. God will lead you to those people that need to be loved. Thanks, Doc, uh, Dr. Boquist, Doc, Pastor Doug Boquist yeah. here at Lima Community You're Church. welcome. I'm Garrett Kisseberth from Corey Ross in high school. Growing up, I was always the weird kid. I was a 185 pound sixth grader. Everyone called me fat. I was shy, I only had two friends and coming back from sixth grade summer into my seventh grade year, I made a drastic change and all of a sudden everyone wanted to be my friend. I quickly jumped into a relationship that wasn't centered around my faith in Christ. That lasted on and off for two years and then I went on the Dare to Share retreat with my youth group. I came back and realized this wasn't right for me, so I ended the relationship. It took a while for me to get my own thoughts out of my head. I felt like I didn't deserve God's grace and forgiveness for the mistakes of my life. I had recently been nominated by my teachers at school to be the first leader of the FCA at Kauai Rawson. I felt guilty and thought I couldn't be the one to lead these kids, but one morning when I got in my car before school, I found a Bible verse on my seat that my mom had left in there. Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Be strong, Garrett. You made it through these obstacles. God is ready to use you as a messenger for him now. Do not be afraid to share his word and your experience. Reading that note was a sign from God himself. As soon as I got to school, I talked to Mrs. McFarland, our FCA advisor, and I told her I was ready to leave. I was ready to show and tell of God's love and grace. As a three-sport athlete, I knew leading the FCA, FCA would require a change in actions, on and off the field. I was finally getting my life together as I had tried four years previous. Our FCA started in 2015 with 11 kids. Today we have an average of 21 students show up eager to hear about God's Word. Oftentimes I will find myself having face-to-face -face conversations with kids who think they're not good enough. Though it pained me to share my story at first, now I understand it was all part of God's plan. He put me through the hardships He did so I could connect to the other Corey Rawson students and use my experience to shine His light. Well, today's health topic brings us to the honeybees. Well, don't worry, we're not talking about stinging and you don't have to worry about the bees, but there is some great health benefits that come from bee glue. That's right, bee glue. What is bee glue? Well, Dr. Trudy Pieper from Phoenix Wellness in Johnstown, Ohio, is here to break it all down for us and tell us how this miracle item 
could just be the next thing that we need in our health system. Well, yes, you know, we've been talking, and even in past segments, we've talked about honey and what a wonderful gift that is, and it's biblical. God, remember, Samson ate the honey, mm -hmm. um, and in Proverbs, it tells us, you know, don't eat a bunch of honey, just eat until you're filled. Um, honey is a wonderful a natural antibiotic, antifungal, antiviral, and we've known about that for a while. But recently, some more studies have been focused on more of the items that bees do, and one of them is called bee propolis, or bee glue, as it's called, <laughs> and, in, and how it can help with viruses and breakouts of cold and flu and bacterial infections. So what exactly is bee glue? Well, it's a waxy substance that's made from plant resin. So as the bees are out flittering over your yard, they're picking up something called the resin from a plant. You, know, you see them in the flower and they're pulling that out. And then they combine that with the enzymes that the bees actually have in their mouth, spit, and they put that together and this becomes this bee glue or propolis. And the way they use that could give us a tip as to how we can use it is that they take that and they take the hive and they spit that or splatter that all over the inside of the hive and it becomes an antibacterial sealant wow. that does not allow any bacteria or anything else from the outside world into their secure area of their, their honeycombs in there. And then they also use it as a caulk to reinforce the hive so it doesn't fall apart. My goodness. <laughs> it's, it's a science lesson today with Dr. Trudy, but it's not just a science lesson. It's something that actually can be applied to your life. Um, so there was a study done that shows how this bee glue can have good health benefits in our own lives. It has. There were actually two studies. One was done in, in Yemen with children who had upper respiratory infections. And the children presented with runny noses, sore throats, coughs, and fevers. Um, they were diagnosed with cold, pharyngitis, tonsillitis, oral thrush, and they said, okay, let's take this group and let's try the bee glue, the bee, bee propolis, on them and see what happens. So they were all treated with that, and the results showed that it stopped the growth of the bacteria. Within 24 hours, all of the children were no longer, they were still presenting symptoms, but they were not as worse, and they were not, and not getting worse at all. Another study in Germany showed that it actually stopped the activity of the strep virus in six hours. In six hours, the, the, the strep virus was deteriorating and slowing down in the body from that. Wow. It also has shown impressive results with skin infections, uh, yeast infections such as Candida and MRSA. So it's got a huge future. Um, if you're, and it's easy to find, you don't have to worry about the little sticky goop. Here's how am I going to eat that stuff? <laughs> Actually, it does come in capsules. So you can go to your health food store and you know, purchase some propolis, have it on hand for when your, your children or for you have a virus because it's antifungal, uh, so it's going to help the yeast. It's antibacterial, which means if you have a, a, a cough or cold that gets worse, and you remember that green mucus that comes from your nose when it turns to bacteria, mm -hmm. it's going to help with that. Or just a simple cough and cold, it will also help with the virus. We kind of forget about, it. again, diet is everything. You know, we're all about nutrition and prevention and natural health. And one area that's so neglected um, because we're a world of fast eating, so we grab this or we grab that, and what we most of the time we grab are carbs. Uh, carbohydrates are, and again, which break down to be sugars. And so we're a society of low protein. And it has been shown that low protein diet depletes the immune system of crucial germ-fighting nutrients. So what it usually again means, if you have low protein, it means you're eating more carbs, which weakens, and carbs and sugar weaken the immune system. So just by increasing the proteins in your body, an egg has six grams of protein. An egg a day will help your immune system be healthier. That's a simple thing, very simple. Essential oils is another option that can help prevent colds and, and flus or treat them. I like to think this, Jennifer, of, you know, today I'm, there's so many chemicals that we we're putting into our bodies that hurt us. So hand sanitizers. Here's one of my boogers. Hand sanitizer loaded with chemicals. So you're rubbing that and it's being absorbed into your body. So a natural way for a hand sanitizer, and again, if you want to fight off the flu and cold and you don't want someone else's germs, I get that, that's important. But they're using essential oils of lavender, peppermint, 
um, lemon, any of those rubbed on your hand on a regular basis. You can keep them in your purse, you can keep them whatever. They smell good, they'll fight the bacteria, and you're not putting chemicals in your body. So really just take the bottle, a drop, a drop and just rub, and it, rub all it all together? In. That's a natural hand sanitizer. Wow, excellent. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, how about probiotics? Knowing again that the colon or the gut, as we say, has 60 to 80% of our immune system's receptor cells for the immune system to be healthy, um, you have to make sure that the lining of your colon's working well. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's true. So the way that we do that is you, you have good bacteria in your colon, you have bad bacteria. Most of the time when you get sick, the bad guys outnumber the good guys. So what we wanna do is to make sure you always have plenty of the good bacteria in your colon. You can buy a supplement and get a probiotic uh, that's got many different uh, types, strands of uh, natural uh, good bacteria in it. But I, again, like you to eat as much as you possibly mm -hmm. can, and there's lots of good sources. A good Greek yogurt has lots of live cultures in it. Usually Greek yogurt has five to 10 billion live cultures. Uh, what you wanna find is a yogurt that has more protein and less sugar. So if it has 13 grams of sugar and nine of protein, you don't want to buy that one. You want to buy the one that says 13 grams of protein and lesser of sugar in there to do that. You can also eat uh, kefir, which a lot of people mm -hmm. make, kombucha, uh, fermented veggies, are all really good things. Sauerkraut coming up in the season, you know, th those are all good th ways. And just doing one of those a day will give you your probiotics. All right, excellent. And then your final one that you have on here is, you know, the, these things you mentioned, protein, essential oils, probiotics, you've probably heard about all of those, but this last one, what Dr. Trudy is gonna suggest to you, <laughs> that's a, I think it's a great idea, uh, but I'm not doing it, I, I need to do this. <laughs> you know, we forget about some of the things, but um, massage, believe it or not, builds the immune system. Wow. <laughs> it's, they have found, of course, that massage will increases the serotonin levels in your body, also your dopamine levels, which means it fights anxiety and relaxes you, so you can fight depression, anxiety with a massage, but also it is it releases and increases the activity of our natural killer cells, which are called T cells, um, which are white blood cells, and the lymphocytes. And when, we, when you have a massage, it stimulates the body to release those, so now that you can fight off um, anything, viruses that you get, just because you had a massage. Well, be watching for more health segments from Dr. Trudy Pieper in the coming weeks. Next week, she returns with her topic, getting a good night's sleep. That's important information for all of us. Well, another piece of important information, perhaps you are spring cleaning right now. Well, that means it's a perfect time to box up your nice items that still have a lot of life left in them and bring them here to TV 44. We are accepting auction drop-offs Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We're specifically interested in high quality furniture and nice antiques, collectible items. Of course, if you have any questions, just give us a call at 419-339-4444. We'll also take new cars. And even old cars. Anything that works. New and old. Yes. We love, we would love to have your automobile. <laughs> we would really love to have your automobile. So if you're thinking about trading in your car and you know you're not going to get a huge a dollar um, amount for the trade-in, well, consider bringing it to us. There'll be a tax deduction for you. So that's a win-win overall. There you go. Finally, we want to say thank you for partnering with us to reach our goal. We have surpassed it in our Spring to Life campaign. Your giving it is an incredible blessing. Your partnership not only supports shows just like this one, but also makes it possible for many of the ministry programs to be viewed on air, as most of those shows do not pay us to air their program. In fact, there are some shows, like our Family Time programming, that require us to pay to get the privilege to air them. Thank you for helping create a family-friendly TV channel that desires to reach the region for Christ. For all of us at TV44, we pray you have a great week. We will see you next time right here on Faith and Friends.